Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing what's known as a quadratic function. A quadratic function will be in this form. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now let me show you the graph of a quadratic function. The graph of a quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, will look like this. It's what's known as a parabola. Okay? It's called a parabola. Now, there's an alternative to f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In this case, the leading coefficient was positive. However, we may have a parabola that looks something like this, and in this case, the function is f of x equals negative ax squared plus bx plus c. And notice that in this case, the leading coefficient is negative. When the leading coefficient is positive, we can say that it opens upward. When it's negative, it opens downward. In other words, it's concave up, and here it's concave down. So f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c forms the graph of a parabola, either opening upward or opening downward. Next, we'll discuss how to find the vertex of a quadratic function. Now let's discuss the vertex of a quadratic function. We have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is our quadratic function. The graph of the function I'll write over here we said is a parabola. Now the vertex of the parabola is where the parabola changes direction. So we'll say it's approximately right there, right? Where the graph changes direction from coming down to going back up. This we said is the vertex. The vertex is a point on this graph and we said it's a point where it changes direction. So obviously it's an ordered pair, x and y. And let's figure out how to find this vertex. Well, there's a formula that we can use. To find the x value of the vertex, we can use negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. You should commit that to memorization. To find the other value of the vertex of this ordered pair, the y value, then we simply take f of negative b over 2a. Right, so therefore, we're just saying when we find negative b over 2a, that x value, we're just going to take f of whatever that value was, plug it back into our quadratic function, and then we'll get the y value. So in essence, the vertex of a parabola is negative b over 2a f of negative b over 2a. So we would like to find the vertex. So we said already that we must use that formula. x equals negative b over 2a to find the x value of that coordinate. So, we know that our a is 2, b is negative 8, and c is positive 5. So we want to just insert that into this formula, negative b over 2a. So x equals negative, <coughs> excuse me, b is negative 8, so negative of a negative 8, all over 2, and we said that our a is 2. 
So x equals a negative of a negative makes that a positive 8. 2 times 2 is 4. So x equals 2. So 2 is the x coordinate in our vertex. The next thing we said to do was take f of whatever this value was. So we're going to take f of 2. So let's do that. f of 2 equals 2 times 2 squared negative 8 times 2 plus 5. So that equals 2 squared is 4 times that 2. 8 times 2 plus 5. So now we can do our multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 5. Positive 8 and negative 16 make negative 8, positive 5, and then we get negative 3. So our vertex is 2, comma, negative 3. So this is the vertex of our quadratic function, f of x equals 2x squared, negative 8x plus 5. This is where our parabola changes direction on the graph. Example number two, y equals negative x squared, negative 6x, positive 4. Our directions are the same. We'd like to find the vertex of this quadratic function. It may look a little different from the last example because before we had f of x is equal to the, function, the quadratic function. Now we have y, but we know from our previous courses that f of x is similar to saying y when we're using functions. So to find the vertex, we identify our a is this negative 1, b is negative 6, c is 4. We're going to use x equals negative b over 2a. Remember, we said we use this formula to find the x coordinate, the vertex. So x is equal to negative of a negative 6, right? We use the negative sign that's in the formula and use the negative 6. 2 times negative 1. x equals 6 over 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So negative into a positive makes a negative. 2 goes into 6 three times. So we have negative 3 for the x value in our vertex. The next thing we said to do was take f of negative 3 and plug it in. So we can say f of negative 3 equals negative x squared, negative 6x, positive 4. So now we take that negative 3 and plug it in everywhere we see an x. So we get negative of negative 3 squared, negative 6 times negative 3 plus 4. Negative 3 squared gives us positive 9. However, we bring down the negative sign that was in front of the parentheses. Negative times a negative makes a positive 18, positive 4. Here we do our addition subtraction. Signs are different, so we subtract. Take the sign of the larger number, which is positive 9. Bring down our 4, and it becomes 13. Therefore, our vertex, these are two values for our vertex. This is the x value, this is the y value. Our vertex is negative 3, comma, 13. That is our vertex of the quadratic function. y equals negative x squared, negative 6x, positive 4. In the previous two examples, we've gotten our quadratic function and found the vertex of each quadratic function. In this case, let's assume it's telling us in the instructions to find the vertex and also find two other points. Let's let those two other points be the x-intercepts. Do you remember what the x-intercepts are? X-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So for a parabola, of this nature will likely have two x-intercepts. So let's begin. Once we solve for the vertex and once we find the x-intercepts, 
you can graph this quadratic function. I'll leave the graphing up to you. So first, let's find the vertex. We said we use x equals negative b over 2a. Our a is 1, our b is negative 8, our c is 12. Correct? So we'll have a negative of a negative 8, 2 times 1. Our a is 1. A negative of a negative makes a positive 8 over 2. So x equals 4. So 4 is our x-coordinate in the vertex. So let's find our y-coordinate. To find our y-coordinate, we said we'll use f of 4. So let's do that. f of 4 equals x squared negative 8x plus 12. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to plug in a 4. So we get 4 squared negative 8 times 4 plus 12. 4 squared is 16, negative 32 plus 12. Here, signs are different, so we subtract. Take the sign of the larger number. Bring down the positive 12. Same thing here, signs are different, so we subtract. Take the sign of the larger number. So our vertex is 4, comma, negative 4. So that's one piece of information. The next piece of information is to find the x-intercepts. Let's do that. We said the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. And to find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. Therefore, f of x is our y. So we set f of x equal to 0. So 0 equals x squared negative 8x plus 12. Now we have to solve for x. So we go through our rules for solving quadratic equations. This looks like it can be factored. The leading coefficient is 1, so we can use our product sum method. So we can basically say x goes in both sets of parentheses. And we're looking for a number two numbers whose product will make 12 and their sum or difference will make negative 8. So let's try 6 and 2. 6 and 2 will make 12 and if you add 6 and 2 you'll get 8. Let's make sure the signs work. Negative times negative gets us a positive. Negative 6 and negative 2 gets us negative 8. So they work. Now we'll use the zero product property. It states that x negative 6 equals 0, or x negative 2 equals 0. From this point, you're just solving a simple linear equation. So here, x equals 6, or x equals 2. So therefore, our x-intercepts are 6, 0, and 2, 0. So this is our other piece of information. Now you have the vertex and you have the two x-intercepts. So you definitely are able to now graph that quadratic function. So take out a sheet of graph paper, use a straight edge if needed to draw your Cartesian coordinate system, and go ahead and graph.